Hey there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny and creative homes. Before we get started with this week's video, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Simply Safe. If you'd like to learn more, you can check out simplysafe.com backslash tiny house giant journey. So I'm really excited for this week's video because it features some of my team members. I am not able to be everywhere at once, so I do not film all the tours for this channel anymore. I have had to hire out, and when I do that, I like to hire people living the lifestyle. I first heard about Kels and Jay back when they were living in a schoolie, and of course we filmed a tour of that. After publishing their tour, we kept in touch, and I became really impressed with the content they were producing on their own YouTube channel. So of course, I hired them to film for me. Now Kels and Jay have downsized yet again, and this time it's into a beautiful self-converted van. And Kels and Jay aren't the only nomadic videographers that I've hired on this channel. So stay tuned, cause I might be featuring another one soon. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you're alerted every single time I publish a new video. Hi, I'm Kels. And I'm Jay. And this is our van, Bessie. So before going tiny, we actually had pretty normal lives. I worked a sales job, a nine to five. And I was in construction. So before the van, we actually lived in a bus and the bus took us about eight months to build and we lived in the bus itself for almost two years. I think the reason why we started with a bus rather than a van is because of me. I wasn't ready to downsize and I didn't think I'd be able to live in a van, but I quickly realized when we were living in the bus, that I really didn't need as much space to live as I thought. So after nearly two years of living in our bus Bessie, we made the hard decision to sell it. We were pretty depressed for about four days or so. It felt like we lost a kid <laughs> when we sold the bus. It was really hard, but sometimes you have to say bye to good things for better things to come. And that's kind of what we had to do with our bus. So now we're living and traveling in our van, Vessi, and we downsized again from the bus to the van just for the ease of getting around. So in the bus, I got real stressed out driving it like round cities, having to figure out if we can even make it through a parking lot or not, or like go down a dirt road and maybe we can't make a three point turn. So for us, the van was a great option because we can, we can take this thing anywhere. It fits in one parking space. We can adventure down some dirt roads knowing that we can turn around if we need to. That was the main turning point that took us from a bus to a van. So the van we built ourselves and it took us about two months and in total it cost us just over 14,000 in materials. It would have been one month but Jay broke his collarbone so it set us back a little bit but this van's a machine, he can build like nothing I've ever seen before. So filming for Tiny House Giant Journey, the channel you are watching right now, <laughs> we get to film all over the country so it works out really well for us. We can kind of plan our routes around different tiny houses. Working for Jenna has definitely kind of helped us improve our editing, our own filming, so it kind of goes hand in hand. We just love filming, editing, and, and anything with videography. When you walk in here over on the left hand side, I know it doesn't look like much you guys, but we have a really functioning kitchen here that I'm obsessed with. So first things first, we have our kitchen countertop. Both of these go up. Underneath we have our sink hiding and our stove with an oven, which I had to fight hard to get this. It was hard to figure out a way to make it work with a lack of storage, but we figured out a way. We also have this pop-up countertop here, which is great for extra space when I'm cooking. And then we have this hidden spice rack. If you're a cook like me, not that I'm a cook, but I, I enjoy cooking. We also have this saying right here, if not now when, those are words that we definitely live by. So we wanted to have it front and center. Right when you walk in, it's the first thing you see. Up here, we have these upper cabinets, again, pushed to open. Lots of storage, lots of room to put a lot of food in there. <laughs> Back to the brim, of course. Down here we have all of our drawers. And another thing that's really nice is all of these drawers are pushed to open. So when we actually get up to drive, we don't have to latch anything. They're just ready to go. And that was one thing we kind of learned from our bus conversion that we did not want to have to deal with again. 
can't forget about Pippa's drawer. So, here we have Pippa's drawer with all of her little cans of food, beans, that's a really good game, and some little cards as well. But yeah, this, this drawer is dedicated to Pippa. Then moving right along here, right under this oven, we have uh, this little area for Pippa. You'll see we have cat ears, she goes right in there, and her litter tray is under there. A huge recommendation I have for litter if you have a cat and you're in a small vehicle are these pellets, litter pellets. You can get them on Amazon or at Walmart. These don't smell, like there's literally never an odor there. They're really easy to clean up. They're a little bit more expensive, but it's totally worth it to not have that cat litter, like the sand everywhere and that, that odor. So yeah, this is definitely highly recommended. Pippa enjoys it as well. You also may have noticed this tea towel. It's more for decoration. This was probably my most favorite gift that we've ever received. We were just with someone helping them with their bus build and this is what they gave us when we left. And it's just perfect. You'll notice that almost everything in this van is related to Pippa and we designed it specifically for her. Pippa looks so cute. So greedy. Work it, girl. Yes. Over here above the driver's seat, you'll see we have a shelf. Uh, we added this in, so we have a lot of extra storage here for things like our camera gear, our Wi-Fi. And this is our Simply Safe. It's a security system which we absolutely love. So this van is not just our home, it's also a vehicle, it's also our workplace, and it has absolutely everything in it that we care about, including Pippa. And it's just really nice whenever we leave to have that peace of mind and know that everything is safe. Whether you live in a van or a house, Simply Safe makes it really simple to protect your home. So it takes less than an hour to install and starts with the base station. In our van, we also have an indoor camera, outdoor camera, glass break sensor, water sensor, panic button, which will silently alert Simply Safe's 24-7 professional monitoring when pressed, and a motion sensor, which can actually tell the difference between a cat and a human, which I think is pretty cool. One of the sensors we rely on a lot is the temperature sensor. It'll actually alert us if the van gets too hot for Pippa while we're out, because as you guys know, Pippa is the most important thing in our lives. And here's the keypad, which we just click to away whenever we leave the van. Please exit now. I personally think the system's the best because it's connected wirelessly to an app on our phones where we can check on the van. So whether we're out on a hike or out filming, it'll alert us if anything's going on in the van while we're away. I feel like living this lifestyle, living a nomadic lifestyle, whenever you're in a new place, it's just nice to have that peace of mind, feel safe and secure, and Simply Safe really does that for us. So if you guys are also interested in Simply Safe, you can actually get 20% off when you sign up for the interactive monitoring plan and you also get your first month free. Just head to simplysafe.com slash tiny house giant journey to learn more, or you can also click the link below. So opposite the kitchen, we have this chair. Now it was really important for us to have like an open feel for this van, but we also wanted to have seating. So that's why we made this chair. So this chair actually folds out, latches down, and then this cushion goes here. So you can have extra seating if you want it. You can sit on this side, enjoy your beautiful view. Underneath this chair, we have all of my shoes. And then we have just little bits and bobs in this drawer, kind of like a junk drawer, I guess. And then we have another drawer over here for things like toothbrushes, ibuprofen, all that good stuff. And then you can also sit down here, enjoy this epoxy table that we made. So yeah, everything in this van, like you'll notice, has like more than one function and that's really important in a small space. This epoxy table is really special to me. It's not the prettiest looking, but we put a lot of our memories from the bus build and the bus, our adventures traveling in the bus, in this table. So it's really nice to look at it. Maybe I'm enjoying like morning coffee, can look at it, and can reminisce on all the wonderful times that we had in our bus bestie. Down here we have our Dometic fridge. I call him Dom. He is amazing. I know it's weird to name my fridge and call it a he, but it just, it just feels right. And yeah, highly recommend it, 10 out of 10. Moving across the van is our wet bath. So this shower door, this is probably one of my favorite features of the van. We were looking at those like retractable 
doors that most people have in their showers in a van or a bus and it's just it's such a big focal point of the van that we didn't want to have to do that so instead we have this plywood door we kind of ripped it down put on marine vinyl fabric that's waterproof antibacteria on the back moving into the shower we have ceramic tile and then on the other walls we have laminate sheets so yeah, it's it's not the biggest, obviously, I mean, we live in a van. We wanted to have a separate area for it. And we have our composting toilet in there and it just kind of gets the job done. <music> Moving into the back of the van, I know it looks like it's just a bed, but there's a lot going on back here. So we have a huge monitor. So this swivels back and forth. We can watch it from anywhere in the van. We also have this classic lagoon table that swivels back and forth. It actually swivels all the way back so we can be back in bed if we're having an extra lazy work day and do work from there. We also have the ability to work here. So if we wanted to have our laptop here, this is like a gaming chair, we can go back here, do some work here, enjoy this huge monitor. So yeah, a lot of time is spent here. Jay and I both work on the road, we edit a lot. We edit for Jenna, we edit our own videos, so this is where we spend a lot of our time. And then when we don't want to use the chair, it just folds back out like that. We can store it away, hide it. Over here, you'll see Pippa at one of her favorite spots in the van. She just loves anything with a window, loves to look out, see where we are, and enjoy the view. Up above here, we have our max air fan. We use this a lot, even when it's not hot outside. It's just a great way to kind of circulate air, get some flow in here when we're cooking, get that air out. Over here, we have three cabinets, and these three and all these shelves are where all of Jay and I's clothes are. So when we downsized from a bus to a van, it was a little difficult for me. I had to get rid of like half of my clothes, but I, I honestly don't miss them. And I'm able to store quite a bit in here. We have these little baggies where we can put a lot of our clothes and Jay was nice to me he gave me an extra one so he just has that one for all of his clothes I have these two and then these three shelves so we make it work you know you got to make some sacrifices to be able to live this lifestyle all right so now we're on the outside of the van the van itself is a Ford Transit long wheelbase extended it's the longest one you can get in the ford model i think the sprinter van is a little bit longer but for us we chose the ford because it's got the highest headroom inside so i'm six foot four so i needed as much space inside as i could so what you might have noticed from the inside is how high up the bed is and that was simply in order to fit our two bikes under the bed from this side and to get them out it's pretty simple you just flick the levers on the two drawer slides, then the whole tray comes pulling out. They come off with these fork mounts. So on this tray, we just have more box storage pretty much. I've got two boxes of tools and then extra clothes, shoes, all that kind of stuff. And then on the left side is all of our plumbing. So we do have a recirculating shower inside. So there's a lot of filters back here, right next to our 35 gallon fresh water tank. And then on the right side is where all our electrical is, all our batteries, all our solar components. And speaking of solar, on the roof, we have just under 600 watts of solar. We use the flexible panels. They're really easy to install. You can stick them right onto the roof. They're a little bit less efficient than the rigid panels, but for us, they work great. The one thing about living nomadically that really appeals to us is just being able to see all that America has to offer. I think it's been amazing as well, all the different people that we've, we've gotten to meet along the way. It's just really nice meeting a group of people all over the country who kind of have the same vision and lifestyle as you do. We've been actually enjoying helping other people with their bus builds. It's been really fun to sort of help make other people's dreams come true, kind of see their eyes come alive when Jay does something for them that they've been struggling with, whether it's building or plumbing or electrical. We've just really been enjoying that. 
the traditional home is just not who we are. It's never who we've been. We're kind of just quirky. We like our own thing. We like to kind of pave our own path and live a life that we want to live. And a nine to five is just not that. I think it was also good to have a nine to five that I didn't necessarily love because it gives me more motivation to try to make it on our own and not have to go back to living that way ever. Yep. You think you'd go back? No. I'm doing it. <laughs>